Father, in the name of Jesus, as I speak right now, I pray, God, that you would anoint my mouth, Father God, to release what words you have placed upon my heart. Holy Ghost, I pray that even through this screen, people who are listening to this message will be so deeply touched and awoken, awoken to the alarm of your end time ring. Lord, I pray that the people who hear this message, Father God, shall not just hear words, Father God, but it will be spirit and it will be life. And in the name of Jesus I just pray God that you would father God not just father give them an emotional reaction father but you would move them into a place of action you would move them into a place father God of devotion repentance and prayer in Jesus name I pray amen The enemy's agenda during this time is not just to come and um, kill lives. It's disgusting. It's horrendous. And I'm angry that this is happening. There is a holy anger in me that I've been venting through prayer. His agenda, though, is not just to, you know, kill people off or to, you know, uh, release this virus so that people catch it. There is so much more to it. At the end of the day, everything that we are experiencing, everything that is going on, even right now, it all comes down to, it all comes down to heaven and hell. It all comes down to a spiritual battle for souls for souls for souls it all comes down to who will be saved who will who will know the lord who will be intimate with god and who will who will make it to heaven and who the enemy can drag to hell who the enemy can deceive and who he can bring into complete confusion so that they do not make it to heaven so that they cannot shine right now right here on the earth so they can be deceived their eyes will be veiled and they go to hell this is what it comes down to people because when the Lord was ministering to me, he said the enemy's agenda during this time is not just for people to stay at home. The enemy's agenda during this time is to scatter the church. He said that his agenda during this time is to scatter the church so that there is a lack of accountability. See, the Bible encourages us to not forsake the fellowship of the saints. I'm speaking about this because the enemy's agenda is to scatter us so that there is a lack of accountability. So that people who have put their foundation or have put their strength or have put their trust in the building rather than the builder, rather than the king of kings, rather than the creator, will end up crumbling because of this virus, will end up being distracted, will end up not having accountability. The Bible says, as I just said, do not forsake the fellowship of the saints. So listen, you don't have to go to church to be saved. You don't. You don't have to enter into a church building uh, to be saved. Listen, the devil can enter into a church building. That is not going to get you saved. What gets you saved is by having a relationship with Jesus Christ, recognizing him as your Lord and Savior. And what aids you in that walk with Jesus Christ is the fellowship of the brethren. Having accountability, having someone to check you, having spiritual um, friends, spirit-filled, spirit-filled church family to encourage you in the faith, to keep you accountable, to be there beside you. No, they're not the foundation of your faith. No, they're not. But they are pillars who will help to uh, help you navigate in your faith. Not only that, I'm looking over here because I'm looking at all of the things the Lord has been talking to me about my notes. The enemy has attempted to close the mouths of worshippers during this time. I pray that this message would help you to, to help you understand the enemy's attempt during this time is to not just kill people off. It is also to close the mouth of the worshiper, to close the mouth of the prayer warrior with discouragement. There's some people watching this video right now. You are your mouth is filled with fear. Your mouth is filled with fear rather than declarations of faith. The next agenda of the enemy through even this time of social distancing, I believe, yes, cool, social distancing is needed. 
you don't want to spread a virus i'm not just going into the spiritual things i do understand that physically we need to be distant from people so that we do not push this virus forward but we must also understand that spiritually even through social socially distancing ourselves even that term alone there's an increase in paranoia because people are being taught to to not reach out to not to not touch people to to be suspicious of people there is suspicion there is disunity there are all of these types of things but guess what in this time, what we are going to see is we're going to see God turn every wicked agenda of the enemy around so that he can use it for our good. We're going to see salvations like never before. We're going to see, do you know the power of social media, the power of video, the power of YouTube, the power of all of these things. I can be in my bed. Do you know, there have been times I've been in my bed. People are getting saved whilst I sleep, y'all. I'm not even American. I'm saying, yo, I'm getting into this, guys. We're going to see God using these social media channels. Stop scoffing at them. Stop looking at people online who are starting prayers and doing all of these things and saying, oh, everyone's doing, you know, because I was a culprit. I was thinking everyone's doing a video now. Everyone's doing an Instagram live now. Everyone's posting this now. Hallelujah. Glory to God that it took us to get to this point for us to shake up, get into position and to begin to push the gospel of God forward. And I believe there's someone watching this right now. God's been telling you you need to open your mouth you need to speak you need to start sharing on me and God wants to use you so I just want to use this right now as a confirmation to you begin to share begin to post because God doesn't need us to even just lay hands in times like this we're gonna see supernatural healings from our home i i led five days of prayers online on my social media instagram it was phenomenal i had testimonies of people telling me that they were being delivered they were being set free from demonic oppression people came to me telling me that they were getting physically healed i was not present in their room i was not laying hands on them but the holy ghost was laying hands on them the Holy Ghost was laying hands on them. And I believe that during this time, we are going to see God pour out a grace that is so big. We've not even, we've not even prepared ourselves to see it. And if we, and if we are not alert, if we do not discern the time, if we do not discern the season, we will miss it. Many people are going to wake up from their, sli their slumber. See, the Bible says, the Bible says, this is why it said, wake up sleeper rise from the dead and Christ will shine on you. Be very careful then how you live, not unwise, but as wise, making the most of every opportunity because the days are evil. Therefore, do not be foolish, but understand what the Lord's will is. Do not get drunk on wine, which leads to debauchery. Instead, be filled with with the spirit ephesians 5 14 to 18 niv translation i've just said why am i reading this out i'm reading it out because god is saying wake up sleeper wake up sleeper you who have been sleeping in your bed you who have not been getting right with god you who has been prioritizing your work the relationships your friendships yourself before God. God is saying, wake up, oh sleeper. Rise from the dead. Because listen, if we are 50% in God and 50% out of God, guess what? You're still out. You're in. That's not being in something. If you're 50% in something and 50% out of something, you are still out of that thing. This time is a blessing for Christians to actually get into the presence of God, to seek him and spend time with him. I saw some people online saying stuff like, if you come out of quarantine, if you come out that time and you haven't even, you haven't even finished your book, you haven't finished that business, you haven't done this, day, you haven't done da 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 da. I'm not trying to say that this is not a time where you can get on with your goals and do all of these great things that maybe God wants you to do. But first and foremost, it is time for us to seek him with our whole hearts. I want you to understand that your weapons of warfare are not carnal, but they are mighty in God for the putting down of strongholds. And this is the thing. The wisdom of this world will tell you that your weapons are weak. The, the, the wisdom of this world will tell you your weapons are weak. Oh, stop praying. Stop this. Stop that. Can't you see that coronavirus is this? Da, da, da. Look at what your God's done now. He's not protecting us. People are dying. This, that and the other. They will look down. But I look in the Bible 
I look in the word of God and I see the power of trusting in the living God. See, God isn't intimidated by disruption. When Eve disrupted the plan of God, we see God already had a plan. Jesus was already in the works. Jesus was already going to be the glorious solution that would come to fix that huge disruption that came in the garden. Listen, when I look at the, at, at the book of Samuel and I see David, he wasn't, he wasn't wearing the same armor that people expected pe him to fight in. He he wasn't wearing the same things that other people were wearing but God raised him up during that time he went with his stuff and his pebbles he came with his pebbles something that people looked at and scorned at and probably thought that looks pathetic even Goliath looked at him and was like How, am I a dog that you come to me with sticks Am I a dog that you come to me with sticks? But David knew I'm not going to put on Saul's armor because Saul tried to put on some heavy armor on David. But David knew that his armor, he knew that his armor was the armor of God. He knew that his time in the secret place where he'd been crying out, praying, worshiping was the reason why he had defeated the bear and he had de defeated the lion. He knew it. And that's why he could go and he could defeat this evil wicked giant that seemed like it was consuming everyone everyone was in fear the whole place was in fear but his weapons were not carnal because people had, people 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 were in the battle people were there they they had their armor they had their they had their their, their their whatever they had their swords they had their they had their their breastplates but they could not defeat it they could not defeat it god had to use a yielded one a worshiper Isaiah 32, starting from verse 9. You women who are so complacent, rise up and listen to me. You daughters who feel secure, hear what I have to say. In a little more than a year, you who feel secure will tremble. The grape harvest will fail and the harvest of fruit will not come. Tremble, you complacent women. Shudder, you daughters who feel secure. Strip off your fine clothes and wrap yourselves in rags. Beat your breasts for the pleasant fields, for the fruitful vines, and for the land of my people, a land overgrown with thorns and briars. Yes, Mourn for all houses of merriment and for this city of revelry. The fortress will be abandoned. The noisy city deserted. Citadel and watchtower will become a wasteland forever. The delight of donkeys, a pasture for flocks. Till the spirit is poured on us from on high and the desert becomes a fertile field. Fertile field and the fertile field seems like a forest hallelujah i'm just gonna end it there this shook me because what i realized from this from this passage in isaiah 32 i was like i can we can apply this we can apply this prophecy back from back then we can apply this to today no, God's, God's not speaking to just women. God is speaking to the unrepentant bride. The unrepentant bride who has put her faith in their luxury, who has put their strength in their jobs, in their, in their social lives, in their outfits that they wear, the image they've constructed, the following that they've they, they believe that they have accumulated. They've put their trust in the money that they have. They've put their trust in the things that they do and they have not acknowledged our God. Listen, God says... Woman, you who are complacent, rise up and listen. He says to them, you who feel secure, us who have felt secure, so secure by the things we've built up, the empires we have, the little castles that we're trying to build for our self-glorification. These things that we've built so that we can feel as though we are secure. We are we are in the right place. We're this, that and the other. My pastor was saying even today, some of you have been climbing up the job ladder, the, the employment ladder. You've been climbing up so high and you've just been so secure by every single step and promotion that you've been getting. And now there's a shaking. Now now there is a shifting. God is saying through this, it's time to strip off your fine clothes. It's time to humble yourself and come into repentance. He's saying, people will tremble with what I'm about to do. He's saying, beat your breast, cry out. 
cry out i'm not trying to say that this is predicting corona by the way i'm not i'm not saying that i just want to put that out there what i am trying to say is that corona has caused a shifting and a shaking that not even prophets predicted and now we tremble now especially people in the western world our fortress will be abandoned no noise a city completely deserted a watchtower and citadel a wasteland People aren't in the streets. There's no one outside. Everything feels like it's destroyed and the economy is in uproar. But what I see is that Jesus Christ, through this scripture, is ministering to me. As we come into repentance, the Lord is going to pour out his spirit 100%. Because when we open our mouths and we cry out to God, he pours out his spirit. And as he pours out his spirit, we're going to experience such incredible people online evangelists are going to be get raised, raised up there's going to be so many people who are going to raise up during this time um mercy gifts are going to raise up people who are going to start up charities who are going to be doing giving gofundmes all of these things to help people get by we're going to see so much grace um in being revealed through people's just their their selflessness and we're going to see people come out of their security, out of themselves and out of their own personal barricaded lives and pride and they're going to depend on Jesus Christ. I'm just finished right now, I'm finished. I know I've spoken a lot, I've spoken a lot, but we're gonna see who the true disciples are during this time. We're gonna see who, who truly will stand for God. I believe that this is part of the end times. The Bible explains that people will be perplexed. The Bible explains that we will see, we will see disease, all of these things as end time signs, as end time signs. Let this be a trumpet sound in our hearts that we would wake up and we would realize, we would realize what is happening and we would become prayerful, become devoted, walk in a new intimacy with the lord and truly truly give our entire life to jesus christ guys i love you i bless you i want to finish this message now and i just want to give an opportunity for anybody watching this message right now to give their life to jesus if some of you are watching this you've drifted from the lord you're here like Lord, just speaking to me. I need to get my life together. I've, 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 I've been putting all of my trust in my job. I've been putting all my trust in my relationship. I've been putting all my trust. Some of you, 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 you can't even see your partner right now. And you and God is using this time to speak to you because he's showing you, honey, that man ain't for you. Because whilst you're in quarantine, he is not making a single itty bitty bit of time for you. And you're seeing his true colours come out because you've been serving him, going to meet up with him, going to help him, going to do everything. But now it's quarantine, there's no relationship. God's ministering to you through that. Some of you are saying, I've just, I've just been wasting my time procrastinating. It's just procrastination. It's, it's time for us to just dedicate ourselves back to Jesus right now. So I just want to invite anyone, anyone watching this, you know, I need to give my life to Jesus. I need to get up. I need to, I need to look, I need to look to the Lord because this is an alarm bell. I don't know. <laughs> um, even if you're saved and you're watching this, just pray along anyway, you know, and just be interceding while she watch this and praying that the next person who watches this video who needs to give their life to Jesus, that they would give their life to Jesus. Lord, I recognize you right now as my Lord and Saviour. I declare and confess with my mouth that Jesus is Lord. I believe that you died on the cross for me, resurrected from the dead, hallelujah, and freed me and forgave me of all of my sins. I confess today that I am a sinner and I receive your grace right now in Jesus' name. I love you, Lord. Fill me with your spirit in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Amen. 
Father God, let me just um, finish off by praying for you. Father God, I just pray for those who have just confessed that prayer. Lord, would you fill them afresh right now in the name of Jesus? Would you fill them with your spirit right now? Lord God, even from this camera, I do not need to lay hands on them, but the power of the Holy Ghost, Father God, the power of the Holy Ghost flow right now into their rooms. Father, we pray for your power to be released right now in the name of Jesus for them to speak in new tongues Father would you fill and ignite them again Father God may they not be drunk with wine would you break off every distraction would you break off every lie would you break off Lord God every treasure Lord God that they placed up inside of their hearts Father God that isn't you in Jesus name I pray in the name of Jesus Lord I pray God would you raise the people up right now to be evangelists to be mouthpieces Lord God spokesmen for you in the name of Jesus would you raise them would you raise them would you raise them in the name of Jesus would you release fresh tongues would you release new tongues Father God would you fill them with your spirit in Jesus name baptize them with fire right now in the name of Jesus Father God, we thank you, Father God, for the fire of God that is coming upon them right now, Lord God. Hallelujah. Through their whole body, Lord God. Just completely, from, Father, Lord, even from, on the, from the crown of their head to the tips of their toes, Lord God. Father, we thank you that you're filling them with a fire from heaven in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name. Father, I bless you. Stir it up. Hallelujah. Stir up everything. Stir up everything that has been made dormant. Stir up every well, Father God, that has been quenched in the name of Jesus. Father God, that which has been shut down, their prayer life, their intercession, Father God, their gift of prophecy to speak, Father God, to Father, speak out, Lord God, with authority and declaration, Father God, that which has been shut down, Father God, their devotion to your word, their devotion to the prayers, Father God, their devotion to you. Holy Spirit, would just stir it up right now in the name of Jesus. We release that grace right now on this on this video right now in Jesus name hallelujah this is what I want you to do I want you to share this video guys I want you to post it on your Instagram stories I want you to post it in group chats I want you to subscribe to this channel and I want us to push this gospel for I'm not playing I'm not playing games in 2020 I'm not playing games because the devil has tried to come for me he has tried to come for me so many times. But 2020 was when he, hey, he really tried it. I'm not playing games. I want a mission. I'm here to push forward the gospel of Jesus Christ. And if anybody is with me, if anybody can hear this message, if anybody wants to push out Jesus, he wants people to know that Jesus is Lord and come to be filled by the spirit, to give their life to God. The most important thing of all, I want to encourage you, share this video, subscribe to this channel and see God move in this time.